Hey guys, welcome to Alcan ADV. I'm Liam Berry. Today we're going to go into a little tutorial on how to install aftermarket lights on a motorcycle. Anyway, we'll get into that right after this. Well, before we start, I guess I thought I'd give you guys a little update on the cabin. Uh, got some windows in. This is looking out toward the hill. You, you can't see it, but there's a hill there. Or, or rather, there's nothing there, and there's a hill down below it. Anyway, um, little window by the stairs, and another one going out, looking into the woods. And uh, we're just insulating upstairs, and I don't know, it's coming along okay. And also, I've got a couple of announcements. Um, I've got this little AR that I got a few years ago, and uh, always intended to build into a you know nice, serviceable little gun, but never got around to it. Uh, I'll put a couple of pictures up here, but anyway, I've decided I can't find any information online about good, inexpensive options for uh, optics, uh, accessories, all the you know rails and, and all that all that stuff that you kind of need uh, to make an AR a little better suited for you know home defense or, or whatever you're trying to do. So I figured I'm going to be a guinea pig. Uh, I'm going to go and I have been uh, on Amazon and Sportsman's Guide and uh, picking up uh, the most inexpensive stuff that I can find that still looks half reputable and uh, I'll tell you guys what I think. Hopefully somebody out there doesn't have to do this and I might get ripped off royally on some things but at least I'll get some information and uh, I'll put it out there and, and somebody can benefit from it. Hey there's me! Also this is a little heads up uh, next Saturday, I'm going to be doing a live uh, Q&A thing, and this will kind of, it, it won't take the place of my normal programming, but uh, I'm going to try it. Anyway, it'll be at noon Pacific time, so all you guys out there on the other side of the globe, uh, my, my loyal fan base that's watching this, you're going to have to adjust. Anyway, I'll be here. Um, Hopefully you'll be able to find me. It's the first time I've been doing something like this, so uh, let's see how it goes. Look forward to see you guys there, and uh, I think that's all I've got, so roll the video. So the lights I installed are the uh, Pilot Automotive uh, PLX line. These are the 9731P, I believe. So they're in the spot configuration versus flood uh, beam. And I think they've got about 1300 lumens per, so that's 2600 lumens for the set. It's not bad, and then I have the LED headlight bulbs as well, but today we're going to talk about these auxiliary lights. Now you can mount a light a lot of places on a bike. Uh, on the KLR there's fairly few options, and so I have another uh, video explaining these brackets, but you can put them down here on the crash bars, up here uh, under the fender. I think it's Happy Trails makes a pretty nice little uh, bracket that you can attach lights to, and they'll turn with the wheel. Anyway, so before you install a set of lights, you're going to need to know a few things. First, do you want a spot or flood beam? Uh, I wanted spot. I want to see straight down the road in a very long straight line as far as I can. And these lights run about $85 per, I believe. They're not, uh, they're not the most expensive on the market, and I know you can get brighter options out there. Uh, but, you know, for what they are, they're pretty nice. Anyway, these are spot, but you can get flood ones as well. Next, you're going to have to figure out where you want to put them on your bike. And actually, this is one of the easier parts of the process. Mounting the light itself is not necessarily a very difficult task uh, once you know where you want it. And the other thing you're going to have to know or have to have is a relay of some sort. Uh, if you're like me and you have two lights, you're going to have to have a relay that'll split and have uh, two wires for the two lights. And what the relay will consist of generally is going to be one wire to the battery, or, or two rather, and then it'll have a fuse in it. And then it'll come up and split into either two or three sections depending on if you have one or two lights. So now you have another decision, and that is whether to wire the light directly to the battery or to a switched uh, power source. Difference here is if you wire it to the battery, you can turn the lights on all the time. That's how I have mine. If you notice the ignition is not on and I'm turning the lights on and off. Uh, that has pros and cons. One, with an LED a light like this that doesn't draw a lot, you can light up your you know, campsite for maybe 10-15 minutes while you're setting up your tent and not have to worry too much about draining the batteries. 
Uh, or you can just flip them on, you, you know, check out what's around and you don't have to have the key turned on. Anyway, the cons to it obviously are they can be left on and drain the battery or they can be turned on and drain the battery by some, you know, nefarious individual. Your other option is to wire it to a switched source and all this means is it's wired to something that turns off with the ignition. Anyway, there's pros and cons to this. I don't quite like it as much. As you can see, I mounted mine the other way, but um, obviously they can't be turned on if you don't have the key in it and turned on, and so that's nice. And you also cannot forget and leave them on. So there are pros and cons either way. Uh, that's just something you're gonna have to decide for yourself uh, what you wanna do. Once you have all your decisions out of the way, uh, you're gonna have to tear the seat off if you got a KLR or a lot of other bikes to get to the battery. And uh, you're either gonna wire both your wires straight to the battery, positive and negative, you know, obviously to their separate sources, or uh, one wire to the battery or a negative ground somewhere and the other to some spot on the bike, some electric accessory or wire that turns off with the ignition. And uh, I have this little uh, USB port up here that's wired that way, so it turns off the ignition. And I wired it, I think, somewhere into the fuse box. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, but on the KLR, you've got a little bitty, like three fuse uh, fuse box, and I just, you know, split one of the wires and wired it in that way. Then you're gonna have to run the wiring harness uh, up forward to your lights. And usually these harnesses are quite a bit too long. I have a lot of wire uh, wrapped up and just zip tied up inside my cowling here just to keep it out of the way. Anyway, probably want to take your tank off for this, but otherwise it's pretty straightforward. Just uh, bunch it up with all the wires and cables going up there. Make sure you don't get the bundles too big or that you have trouble putting the tank back on. Once you get that, you're going to split them and uh, run your separate wires to you know their respective spots. Here's one of my uh, bundles right here of just looped up around and around and then zip tied or wired or something. Anyway, after that it's pretty straightforward. Uh, figure out a place to mount your switch, figure out a place to mount your lights and, and plug it all in and you're pretty much all set. Anyway, I hope somebody got something out of this. Uh, I had to do quite a bit of research when I was, when I was doing this, so uh, hopefully this will make it a little easier on somebody. Well that is the video. Uh, thanks for tuning in. As always, I'd love to hear your questions or comments or uh, whatever else down in the comments section. And uh, you guys ride safe, and we'll see you next week. And I have some more good news. Uh, there's an old tire, and there is a new tire. Brand new set of Shinko 804-805s, uh, just ready to get put on. So that should be pretty fun.